Hi, welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me as Bookish Stitcher, all one word, on Ravelry, Instagram, and also on Goodreads. I forget to mention that sometimes, but I'm on there. And if you're really active on Goodreads, I would love for you to come and find me and add me. I'm really active on there, and I love seeing what people are reading. It's always good to get new ideas for books. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week since we last spoke. I've had a really good one. I had a surprise come in the mail this week from a good yarn um, who was in our Ravelry group. It was so sweet. She sent a card saying how much she loved the po loves the podcast. And that was really, really awesome to hear, of course, and just to you know have her say that because I want the podcast to be kind of, you know, a, a community of friends that's really kind of you know, just want the Ravelry group to be a place where we can all get together and talk. And I really do view everyone that, you know, chats on the Ravelry board as friends of mine and it makes me smile to get on there and talk to you guys. And the Ravelry group's always growing and there's always new chatter on there and it's really wonderful. And have that as a little community with you guys. So it was really nice to hear her say that she loves the podcast and loves, you know, the Ravelry group and chatting on there. And she also sent me some fiber in these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And it's so soft. So thank you so much, A Good Yarn. That was a really sweet surprise. And I also had um, talked about last week how I went um, pottery painting with some of my mom friends. And I got the pottery yesterday. It was all done firing in the kiln from the place. And so I wanted to show it to you guys. I actually have the mug with me. And this is just me painting freeform. It's, you know, I'm not an artist. <laughs> and so it kind of reminds, I don't know, it's kind of nice. It has blues and then the speckle yellow the lights kind of glaring off of it. There you go. Perfect. And you can kind of see that. And right now I'm drinking in my mug some, this is really good stuff you guys. Trader Joe's Salted Caramel Chai, and uh, I don't know if you have in your area Trader Joe's, but uh, or as my husband and I lovingly refer to it as TJ's, it's a really great little grocery store. It kind of has weird, not weird, but like good combinations of things you would never even think of to put together, and it has really great prices and stuff like that, so we loved uh, Trader Joe's, but this stuff is amazing. I also, at the Mom's Pottery Night, did a bowl. And again, the light is kind of making it so I'll hold this over it so you can see. It's speckle dyed. And there's white speckle and purple speckle. And as I was picking these up, I was really thinking that my son would love to go do this. So I think that soon in the future it will be a mommy-son date to go to this place and he will paint whatever he wants to pottery-wise. And I think I will actually do a set of Roy G. Biv rainbow colored bowls. So I'll have my purple one done, but I was thinking to do different rainbow colors so we can have a set for the house in all different rainbow colors. So I really, I was happy to see how they turned out because you never know um, when you're painting them how it will look after it fires in the kiln. And it was, it was really nice to see the colors kind of darken into a, a really nice color there. And I also wanted to talk about something that I've been doing this week. I had to look at my notes because I have a lot I want to talk with you guys about. I went and downloaded a new Craftsy class. So they have a new Craftsy class that I've been looking at for a while. And it's how to be a continental knitter. And continental knitting, there's, I guess, two different types. Well, there's, there's tons of different types. But depending on whether you throw the yarn or whether you pick. And I have always been an English style or thrower. And it's a little bit slower and that doesn't really concern me. I, I'm not worried about speed. But the thing that does make me pause and think and had made me want to learn to transition to continental is that continental is better on your wrists. And I'm sure as anybody else who crafts knits, I want to be doing this till like as long as I possibly can. I just, I love it so much. I don't want to ever get to the point where I have problems and I can't do it anymore. That would just devastate me. And so I think I'm going to try to transition over to it. I've been knitting for 
since my early 20s, very early 20s, so for about eight years. So it might be a, a big transition, and it might take a little bit of time, but my idea is that I'm going to do washcloths and use those to practice the uh, continental because I can watch the class knit on a washcloth and I'm actually going to be using the washcloths just knitting them all throughout the year and then at the end of the year I'm going to wrap them up in little bundles with washcloths and like some soap from like somebody on Etsy and then just uh, use some of my hand spun and wrap those up as gifts for different friends instead of hand knitting everybody's socks for Christmas next year or this year but I think that'll be a great way to practice and I already watched the first segment and I tried a couple stitches just kind of doing it and I am learning how to not twist my stitches when I do it continentally because I was twisting a couple of them and of course when you first learn something new I am slower at it right now but I look forward to being really speedy and having minimal wrist problems or whatever throughout my life so I'm really excited about that and Craftsy is wonderful. I There's so many classes on there that I want to take. I've, I've been wanting to take a spinning one for a while, but I, I haven't. Hopefully that will be my next one that I do. I'm kind of perusing the different ones to see which one would best work out for me and what I want to do. So let's get into my finished objects this week. First I'll take a sip of water. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who said how cute my husband and I were uh, last week on the podcast. He was very sweet to come and help me out with talking. I don't normally cough with the allergies, but normally in everyday life, you're not speaking for several minutes straight. You know, you're talking to somebody, and I am much more of a listener. I love to listen, and so... I'm not talking for a prolonged period of time, so I didn't know that my voice would be coughing, but when I was talking for a prolonged period of time, it was, so it was nice for him to come and help, and I'm glad you guys thought that it was cute. And he also is saying now that he realized that he, that scarf he's knitting that he showed up before, he realized that if he wants it done by Halloween this year, he needs to knit, I think, a foot a month, and so he keeps saying, I better actually get on that. So let's go with my first thing. Oh, finished objects. I'm going to forget it because it's on my head. And the lights are going to kind of blare this out. I'll use my little adorable notebook to do that. This pattern is the Measure and Love pattern by Megan Williams. And I showed you guys last week, I was about halfway through. The yarn that I used for this is Knitting in Color. And it's the most soft, squishy hat. I really like it. And it's white with flecks of pink and turquoise and black. So it's it's a really great hat and I enjoy the pattern. You definitely um, need to pay attention to the chart on it. I I was trying to knit it while running around with my kids throughout the day and I, I realized I needed to pause. But once I looked at the chart and kind of memorized the first pattern repeat, I, I was fine for the rest of it. And the next thing I have is a half done object. And I finished the first of my Breaking Hearts socks. So pretty. And this is in some Neely's Knits. Have the tag right here for you guys. Neely's Knits. And it's in the colorway The Mood for a Love Affair. And this is some yarn that I won at the knitting retreat, a door prize. I really, really like all the colors, and you can see it didn't pull too bad on the bottom at all, so I think it would have even worked as a um, vanilla sock. I finished the first one of those, and then I cast on just a tiny bit on a cuff, that part. So I look forward to finishing these soon, and these are hanging out in my wonderful Girl Cave bag my little Matrushka Red Riding Hood pattern. The next thing I worked on this week was my daughter's hooded cloak by Debbie. It's a Debbie Bliss pattern out of that book that I've shown you guys several times. And when I last showed this to you, and this is in my um, On the Dock Knits bag. It's very, very cute. It makes me excited for springtime when our uh, we have a peach tree in the backyard when it blossoms. The blossoms are gorgeous. So this sweater is being knit 
out of some Barocco vintage, Barocco vintage, and I believe the lilacs colorway. The last time when I showed this to you guys, it's kind of all bunched up everywhere, I had just begun the yolk. So this week, I finished the yolk. You can see it right there. That's where the yolk started. This is going to be the sleeve. There's the yolk. And I'm on to the hood. I would have probably had this finished, but on Tuesday, actually, I ran out of yarn. And I didn't get to get new yarn from the yarn store till Friday. So there were several days where I didn't even touch it. But uh, it's a really cute pattern because the hood is, as you saw, there's a hole. It just fell off the table. As you saw, there's a hole in the back. But what you do is you kind of bunch that in so it creates a little cute part in the back. And probably as you noticed, it looks very large. Well, the pattern only goes up to 24 months, so I did math thinking that I was enlarging it. I did the 12 month size to the 24 month size, and I measured the difference in the stitch count between the two of them, and then I upsized from the 24 2T up the same amount of stitches that was the difference between the 12 and the 24, thinking I would get a 3T, but it looks really, really big to me. But that's okay because she will grow. That's the great thing about it. If it's something too big and it's for a kid, they will grow and they'll get to wear it sometimes. So I will be happy to have that done next week and it has a big button on it that you get to put, uh, put on there. So I'm excited to pick out a cute button for that. I might go to Etsy and order like a special one because it, it will be a really good opportunity to have just a cute button right there. And the next thing that got a tiny bit of love, this actually only got worked on at knit night last night, which I went to, and this is my awesome granny bag, and knit night is, we have, you know, different knit nights throughout the month, and the one I go to the most often is held on the second and fifth Saturdays, I believe, of the month, and January just happened to have a fifth Saturday, which was awesome. And I don't believe I got to make it to the first Saturday, or the second Saturday. So I went to this one and worked on my sweater. There were a ton of people at knit night this uh, weekend because, well, I don't know why, but I went in and it's held in a diner, I, you know, just like a little local, well, it's a chain, but a diner. And I went in and I looked in the back and there's like two corner booths and a whole bunch of tables and we... The knitters took up the entire back of the restaurant and I walked in and thought, whoa, there's a lot of people here. And I, I'm not a big crowd person, but I, I found my little nook over in the corner and sat with some friends and I did get to talk to some people on the other end because people kind of rotate. That's a nice thing that happens at our knit night, that people will bounce from table to table and say hi. So that was nice. And while I was there, I worked on my Ease sweater by Alicia Plummer. And as you can see, last week I just bound off for the shoulders, or for the arms. Not bound off, I guess just taken off. So that's what I got knit at knit night, which is a good three or four inches, but you have to remember it's on size 10 and a half needle, so that goes pretty fast. And the yarn I'm using for this is Malabrigo Rios in the Lavanda colorway, and it's grays and purples. It's gorgeous, I really, really love it. So it's just going along. I hope to have this, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say when I hope to have anything done on this because I'm having severe cast on -itis. And I have like five projects I wanna cast on. I think, I never allow myself to, so I'm always, you must finish these or do I I set little like I don't know what you would call them little challenges for myself that's just kind of person I am and I think I'm just gonna let myself go I think tonight I'm just going to put on a movie with my husband and as many things as I can or want to cast on I'm good to do it can you tell I'm excited <laughs> I'm thinking about it in my head and the little kid in me is like yeah you're gonna let us cast on all the things so I, I I'm going to let myself cast on all the things so next week there may be a lot for you guys to see 
those are my like newer things that I've been working on. I did want to bring out and show you guys, because it's been a while, my longer term projects. And I actually worked on one of these a ton this week. And this is in a fat squirrel fiber bag. So this in here is my Color Affection by Vera Valamaki. The yarns I'm using for this are some wandering wool in the purple, some two if by hand in a gray, and then some sparkle sparkle purple and gray, another crafty girl. You see the sparkles? Oh yeah. And so I am um, going to be sending some minis to a friend in a little bit, and the color she's using for her, her scrap sock yarn blanket uh, include purple and gray. So I want to get these this shawl to the point to where I can send her some of those. I've been working at it really hard to get that so I can send those in the mail to her. Now, I just have, let me find the spot, this much left for the short rows. So I think I have nine or ten more short rows to go. And let me see. It's huge. I have a knitting retreat at the end of this month. It's just a local one. There are no classes. There's no market. It's just a little three-day weekend where you go and you sit and knit. So this is going to be maybe the only project that I take to that so that I can hopefully get it done. As you can see, purple starts off and then it goes to right here is the two color section of purple and gray. And then right here is the purple, gray, and then purple and gray sparkly. And the border will all be the purple and gray sparkly. It's trapped on my table. That was one of the long-term projects that I've been working on. The next long-term project that I've been working on I lovingly call the Big Cozy because it's out of Knit Picks, the Big Cozy, and I actually need to get some more of this yarn because I'm running out because this blanket is huge. It's the zigzag pattern. I can't remember right now who it's by, but it's in my projects page. This is probably the last view of this project you guys will get till it's done. And when it's done, I'll probably just show you a picture because this thing is enormous. And it keeps growing as blankets do. Everybody else is, it's funny, everybody else is knitting like little sock yarn scrap blankets. And I have one of those that I need to work on. But I chose to knit the most ginormous blanket ever. <laughs> there you go. Starts off with the blue and a brown, a light brown, and then a blue, and then a caramel color, and then the blue. And then this last color is a darker brown. And I have to do 16 of these stripes. So I'm not really that close to being done. Isn't it huge? I, I will be glad when it's done. I'm not sure that living in Texas, I needed a giant alpaca, super bulky blanket, even in the winter. <laughs> I might be able to go sit outside when it's 30 degrees occasionally and have that blanket on me. Maybe it'll be, maybe I'll take it out on the deck occasionally in the winter and read a book with that over me. But that's probably the only time I could use that because it honestly doesn't get that cold in the house even during the winter. So those were my two longer term projects. And I only show those occasionally on the podcast as you guys know, but hopefully they'll be done really soon because that giant blanket I'm not going to want to be working on in the summer. <laughs> so that's my goal to get it done either this month or next month. And then, as I said, with the color affection, my goal is to take it to the knitting retreat at the end of February and just work on that. And it will be great retreat knitting. There are some amazing people out there, maybe you're one of them, who can knit intricate lace things at knit nights or at retreats while talking to other people. And you're amazing. I am. If you can do that, I am not one of those. I can mess up the most simplest thing in my mind, even if I put stitch markers in. In my mind, I'm like, oh, stitch marker, that's pretty. Keep going, talking, talking, listening, listening. And it it just doesn't, nothing will get me to do a pattern correctly. When I am around people, I get easily distracted. So 
those are all my works in progress that I have right now. Next week, as I said, there's some yarn floating around. I will probably have more stuff to show you guys because I'm going to cast on some new stuff. Probably a shawl and things like that because I'm excited to do that. Now I wanted to show you guys some spinning. Okay, so I finished a braid for a friend and I can't show that because it's a surprise. And then I've also been spinning some on my wheel on learning a new technique called over the fold. And it has, it's been challenging because it's new. And so it's been thick and thin and stuff like that. And I'm not quite done. I have a little bit left or else I would have brought it down to show you guys. But I decided that February is going to be, you see all this, the month of getting some spindle projects off the spindles. I really need to get some of these done and I'm probably gonna apply them on my wheel because that'll be easier. But I have basically what will be four, I have four different spindles going, but it'll be two yarns. So I don't know if you can see these. There's some Nidian Color, there's some Yarn Shine, and there's some Knitter's Nightmare on a trindle. And then this was just a like really, really cheap steampunk kind of uh, spindle that I got at a festival. This is a silly salamander and this is a clay sheet one. So that's going to be my goal for February is to get at least two of those cleared. I'm going to allow myself to spin one braid of fiber on my wheel but the rest of the time for my spin 15 and 15 goal is going to be spent working on these. And I'm excited to have something off there because they're just sitting there and they need to be worked on. So I don't have any new enabling. I haven't gotten anything since the very first weekend in January, I believe, at the Fiber Festival. But I completely forgot to show you guys this. I got these in December, last December, when she was having her um, holiday sell. This is some January yarns. And I got... I special ordered this. Well, I special ordered all of this, I guess. But this is a skein of her merino worsted in the color graphite. And I don't know if you guys remember, but for my mom, I made the escargot hat for Christmas. And I said how much I loved it, and I wanted one for myself. So I'm going to do one for myself in a gray and a green. And then the other thing I got from her is some merino DK in her squash blossom colorway. And I got a couple skeins of these of this to make a short sleeve little sweater that I can wear. It's called the Buttercup Pattern. She's doing a uh, sweater knit along in her Ravelry group right now. And speaking of Ravelry groups, I also wanted to mention the Barb Dragon is a Ravelry group and she does yarn and fiber. She actually did the fiber that I showed off on the podcast a couple weeks ago and she has a great giveaway going on in her Ravelry group where if you're a member of the group, and it's a very small group right now, I think 28 people, so your chances are pretty good. If you're a member of her group, and every time it's a month, new month, she will draw for a birthday. So if it's your birthday month and you're a member of the group, you could win a $40 gift certificate to her shop, and that's amazing. So I will link that in the show notes for our Ravelry group, the Bookish Stitcher All One Word podcast, so you can go and check that out because... Who doesn't want a chance at winning $40 uh, store credit to a beautiful store? So I, I am excited, hopefully. I have my fingers crossed for March. But if you're February or any other time, you should definitely go join her group. We also have going on in our Ravelry group, Swap. And it's the local uh, swap. It's a $20 swap. Sign up, Sign-ups are open till February 10th. So you have a little over a week to get in for that. We have a lot of people joining in. It's going to be really exciting. My favorite part of that thread right now is going and reading what people are collecting. There are people that collect birds. There are people that collect sheep. There are people that collect vintage coffee. Po like There's so many amazing things that you guys collect. And I feel like you can get to know more about a person just by kind of glimpsing that into their life about what they collect. So that's really neat. I also wanted to say that I'm going to be starting up, 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, for the swap, the packages will have to be mailed out on by March 1st. And I will, when I shut that down the night or the morning of February 11th, I will have your swap partner to you that that same night, like the night of the 11th. That will all be sorted out, so you'll have plenty of time to get the things that you want to include in your swap. And I was going to mention, I think I'm going to put up on the Ravelry group a de-stash thread. So if you have anything that you're wanting to de-stash, such as yarn or needles or project bags or any of those things, you can put that in there so we can all look at it and get one person's giving away and another person can get stuff, so that would be awesome. I decided to go through my project bags because I have quite a few and I'm going to things this year that will have project bags at them and I'm going to want to be able to get another one or whatever as I'm there. I don't want to feel like, oh, I have too many. So I went through and I picked out four of my project bags and of course I love all my project bags that I picked one that either I already have a lot from that same person or I'm not as in love with the fabric or just different various reasons and I'm going to put them up on the Ravelry group for a de-stash. And this is the first one that I'm going to be putting up. It's just a mustache bag. I used to be really, really into mustaches. And it has, the great thing about this is, let me see if I can show you, it has tons of pockets on the inside. Tons and tons of pockets so you can sit all your stuff in there. I think there's four or five pockets. And I don't remember who this one, who made this one. I think it was like Rabbit, 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 something like that. I think it had a rabbit in the title. It's an Etsy seller. Another bag that I picked out, this giant sweater bag. And it's a bird leg bag. It has a little carabiner and a zipper and the inside looks like that. So that's going to go up in the Ravelry D stash thread. And then I have two uh, fat squirrel bags because I went to SSK, the knitting retreat, last summer and I'm going there again. She's going to be vending again. But I had never gotten a chance to get any of her bags so I went kind of crazy. And so now I'm scaling it back and I kept two that I absolutely love. And then I'm giving you guys a chance if you want to for the D-stash thread. Purchase these. This is a really pretty one. It has rain boots and flowers growing out in birds. And there's her little logo. And there's another one. This was actually the SSK uh, like SSK special bag, I don't know what you would call it, that she did up just for the retreat. And I really wanted the little wooden tag, so I took the wooden tag off that says SSK, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you can see where I took the tag off. But then the pattern, I'm not as much a pink person, but I really wanted the special bag. So those will be going up for a de-stash. So if you guys are interested, go and head over to the Ravelry group. You have to be a Ravelry group member. I just, you know, want to keep it within there for getting this de-stash. And like I said, if you have anything that you want to de-stash, please come on over and put it in the thread. So let's talk about the book this week before my iPad decides to die and I can't show you the picture. So this is the book called Rooms a novel by Lauren Oliver. And there, I have showed you the picture so you can see it before the iPad dies. So this book I finished reading just a little while ago and I'm actually using it as part of the 2015 reading challenge that we have going on in the Ravelry group that I think a ton of people are doing everywhere right now. It's that little checklist. And one of the things on the checklist was read a book with a one-word title. Check that one-word title. So this book was not what I expected. The whole premise of the book is that there is a father, an estranged father, who has died. And he has left all his stuff, his house and everything, and he's kind of a hoarder, to his ex-wife, and different people in their immediate family. And so the ex-wife and her oldest daughter, who has a little girl of her own, 
and then the teenage son all come back to the house. But in the house, there are ghosts. And kind of because of the cover, I thought it was going to be a bit of a scary story because it had ghosts, but it's not scary to me. And now scary is a level of preference. Everybody's scary is different. It's not scary to me in the slightest. It was definitely more what I would call a family drama. The father, as I've said, was estranged and um, had problems of his own with the hoarding and issues like that. The mother has is an alcoholic, and so she has problems with that. She also has the problem of never really forgiving her husband, which is probably a horribly hard thing to do, because I believe he or he did cheat on her and leave a whole bunch of his money to the woman that he cheated on her with, and they find that out when they're going through the will. And then the eldest daughter, who has a child of her own, has problems. She's, um, I think, I don't know if this is still the term used for it, but she, I believe it's nymphomaniac, which she, you probably know what that means. She likes to have relations with men a lot, and she has a problem. And I think, it's mostly I think she feels empty. And she tries to fill that void. She talks about, it's a very good description of how that, kind of how she feels about how she's numb all the time and trying to fill this void. And then the teenage son has depression, very, very severe depression, and is suicidal at times. So as you probably can tell, it's not a lighthearted book, but it could be read very fast. I think the first day I read it, I read about 25% on my Kindle, and I could have finished it very quickly. It's a very fast read. Like I said, there are ghosts in it, and the ghosts all have stories of their own. There's murder, there's, you know, different family relations within the ghosts, because the ghosts are people who have died in the house. And so the ghosts aren't scary. It's more just a story. And the entire book kind of deals with the family's emotions and what they're going through at the passing of their father and finding out different stuff in the will, and it's very, I don't know, and on Goodreads I gave it a three stars. I think that's mostly because I expected it to be a bit of a scary story, and it was not. So, I, I would recommend it, but I, I wouldn't pay full price, like if you can get it at the library or something to check it out, that might be a good idea. I have the problem of if ever I buy a book, I have to finish it, so I need to start going to the library more because then I can feel okay if I am reading a book and it's not my favorite to put it down. Now, this book, I, I wouldn't, I wanted to finish it. I wanted to find out how it ended and everything. And there are a lot of twists in it, a lot, a lot of twists. So I think that's pretty common in family dramas. But the author, uh, Lauren Oliver, she this she's a New York Times best-selling author, but this is her first time writing for adults. I believe she writes YA, and so she's quite known for that. So this was her first adult novel, and I liked it. And if you like books about family dramas, then I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it you know, as I said, it, it's kind of depressing. But if that doesn't bother you, it never bothers me. I enjoy all range of human emotions. I definitely read happy books, sad books, books that deal with tough subjects. And I would recommend that to somebody if they, if they liked family drama books. My iPad just died, so I can't show you a picture of it again. But the book is called Rooms by Lauren Oliver. And if you like family dramas, go check it out. This is... In the States right now, it is Super Bowl Sunday, which means that football is happening. And we did get invited to a Super Bowl party, and I don't know if we're going yet. We're not really big Super Bowl people, but we are big loving our friends people and liking to get to hang out with them. So we might go, but regardless, this will be uploading while either if I'm here hanging out with my family or if I'm at a Super Bowl party hanging out with friends in my family. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, whatever you choose to spend it doing, and I will talk to you guys next week. Okay, bye.